What's up YouTube? My name is Ruff and today I want to go over my default Ableton template and how I use it to speed up my workflow. So when I open up Ableton every time, this is what it looks like to start. So going from top to bottom, I have that reverb group that I talked about in the last video. And I also have a delay group and this is for easy access to reverbs and delays. I find myself using a lot that I could just copy and paste and throw on any track. Then I have not set to the master, but going directly out a reference group where I'll load up reference tracks when doing mix downs. And I don't route them to the master because if I have things on my master chain for my track, I don't want the reference tracks to get those effects because they've already gone through their own mastering chain. Then I'll group everything that's not vocals in this non-vocals group. And the reason why I do that is because I put this build FX rack on the non-vocal group, which consists of a utility, an EQ, and a reverb. And I'll automate the width of the utility and the gain of the utility. Then I'll also automate this low cut here, as well as the dry wet knob on the reverb. And I'm gonna talk about that in Wednesday's video, but this is how you create tension going into your drop or chorus. And I'll put that on just my non-vocal group or bus because I don't want any vocals to receive those effects because it sounds a little bit unnatural. When I open up the non-vocal group, you'll see I'm pretty organized with my atmosphere, chords, leads, bass, kick, drums, FX, and guitar. I'll just kind of have a few tiny things on each of these groups. So for my drum group, for example, I have a Devil Lock Deluxe from Sound Toys set to 5% on the mix knob and just 1% on the crush and crunch with a slow release and I have this as a group or parallel send like negative 18 decibels on the wet and this just really beefs up your drums and I just keep this on my drum bus because I know every time I work on a track I'm going to end up putting it on the drum bus anyway so to just have it there to start speeds up my workflow because then I don't have to remember to put it on every time because it's just always there and you'll notice I have a low cut that's loaded up and ready to go on every single bus and every single track as well. Then on each track, I'll have a utility with the volume set to negative six decibels just to keep my levels. And that's just something I like to do, but you don't have to do that. Then on all my audio tracks, I'll have a tuner just in case I need to figure out what note something's playing quickly, just boom, it's there. And then some of the things that I like to use in almost every track, like this portal piano that I like to use to create some atmosphere, just like. That's always there because I always use it in some fashion. And I'll use this cool pad a lot just to create some more depth as well, just like. So it's just there because I know I'm always using it. So a good rule of thumb when you're setting up your default template is if you know there's certain sounds, certain plugins, certain instruments, certain effects tricks that you do in almost every track, if you just have them ready to go right when you load up Ableton or whatever your DAW is, it's just gonna speed up your workflow and make everything a lot quicker. Like I'll always have my MIDI keyboard linked to this piano. So every time I open up Ableton, if I'm gonna start with the chords, which I pretty much always do boom my piano is open and I could just go so just having everything set up for you to just lock in and go is the most essential part of setting up your template in your DAW so now we're bumping it up we're doing three videos a week Monday Wednesday Friday no more one video a week so three videos a week Monday Wednesday Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern now so make sure you lock in because we got some good stuff coming but that's all for now. Peace.